Hey everyone, I'm Brian Phelps from Big Leap, founder and CEO. We're coming to you from Lehigh, Utah, right in the heart of Silicon Slopes. We're excited to introduce the Big Leap web series where we talk to successful leaders about what they've done that makes them so successful. My guest today founded Tasani Companies in 2013 and co-founded Sunshine Heroes Foundation with his wife in 2007. He played basketball for Brigham Young University for three seasons, finishing with a 44-1 home record, an all-time best for BYU. He was drafted by the Atlanta Hawks in 2003 and played professionally in Spain and Russia until 2011. He's the author of The Next Few Years Will Change Your Life and the father of five children. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Travis Hansen. Thanks for coming. We're excited to have you. Thanks, Brian. We, excited to be here. Yeah, we were uh, talking about you know people to to join our web series. And we were thinking of you know authors, you know successful business people, you know athletes, things like that. And we decided, hey, we can knock all those out with one guy, and that's Travis Hansen. So couldn't, you couldn't find anybody else. No, we got them all. This is it. <laughs> we, we found it. Um, so that's great. We again excited to have you. You know we've we've met before, and and you've kind of followed your career over the years too. You know, take us back to, to kind of where you got started. Was basketball something you've always just loved? Is it something you kind of grew into? I think basketball kind of chose me because my 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 body uh, shape and, and athletic yeah. ability. But I played soccer, baseball. I grew up playing sports. My family was very sports sports oriented. Uh, my mom always made us do sports because she wanted us to do hard things. Mm. She thought sports was, was either a farm or sports. Mm. I remember being at Mountain View High School, played for Rob Cuff. Phenomenal coach, uh, went out to the bleachers, football bleachers, to, to uh, uh, get in preseason shape, right, mm -hmm. it was before the yeah. season. And, yeah, and and usually, sometimes they call it hell week, right? And so yeah. went out there and I threw up. <clears throat> and I remember thinking, this coach is psycho. Like, this guy is <laughs> insane. I can't believe I'm doing this, you know. Um, but then I went to BYU and it was way harder. I mean, the coach there, Heath Schroyer, would put us in a defensive stance and you know I couldn't walk for three days afterwards right and so yeah. I think every level uh, gets harder and, and there's different levels of hard work you'd be more efficient you'd be more productive uh, the NBA was really tough and then Europe I was practicing three times a day when you kind of transition in the business world you know what are what are some of those fundamentals that you focus on as I mean the owner of several companies what are those you know everyday things that you think maybe sometimes people are missing because they're maybe getting distracted by the more you know it's exciting things sometimes well i think business is cut in half you got the the side of uh skills administration accounting marketing all those different things and so and, and on that side you really got to keep the customer in the forefront you got to understand their problem got to understand the customer um and then you got to build the right team to, around solving that problem and then you got the whole people side of soft skills which they don't really teach you too much in in, in our society and education you just kind of got to learn you got to learn it through sports learn it through your family you learn it through just trial and error which is how to negotiate, how to discern, how to get along with people. Uh, people really like to do business with people they like. Yeah, and so how, how, how do you become likable? That should be a, like a, a course in the university. Yeah. And, and um, so I think, I think, you know, there's a, quite a few things. I think the harder you work, the luckier you get. Mm -hmm. I worked really, really, really hard. I woke up at 6 a.m. for basketball uh, and I thought, you know, I'm at least gonna get a scholarship in college yeah. or at least, you know, stay out of trouble through high school. Mm -hmm. But the harder you work, sometimes good things happen, sometimes great things happen, and some, sometimes incredible things happen. And I would never thought I'd play in the NBA. There's a lot of better players than me, a lot more athletic. A lot of things have to line up, but you work hard, you put yourself in the position that sometimes those things line up and, and good lessons learned. One of the, I mean, overall, I think as we've talked, there's lots of things we can see over Travis's career that you've prepared for, you've practiced, you've done all those different things. But one thing we always like to ask is kind of the final piece of this show is, even if it's all oh, you've done all the preparation, what was one thing in your career, your personal life, whatever it may be, that you felt was just this this big leap? Maybe you you know kind of knew your odds and it was good, but it was still was just a you know a big leap or a big chance you took that you know panned out to be successful. Um, man, that's, that's that's a great question. Uh, probably, um, I think believing in yourself. You know, I think I think throughout life you. You read books, you meet with mentors, you watch TV shows or music, or you learn certain things. And these are all receptors that kind of go into your gut fill. Yeah. So I think trusting yourself and trusting your own gut. You know, if you, if you read, if you don't read books yeah. and you watch bad TV shows, you have bad friends or uh, friends that just aren't great influences, you're going to have a messy gut. And so it's yeah. hard to trust your gut. And so I, I say put as much good and, 
and be vulnerable and say you don't know what you want to do with your life and then learn about it and research about it and do everything you got to do and put the work in and then you'll have a better gut and, and then you'll trust yourself. Travis, if you're willing, we have you know some employees at Big Leap here that I'm sure have some, some questions for you. Let's do it. A lot of people start businesses. In your opinion, what's the difference between those that succeed and those that fail? So I'd, I'd probably start with three things. Uh, they don't screw up the cap table. Um, they don't uh, pick a business that doesn't have great margins, and then they're very careful who they hire. Uh, the top two, three people that you hire, they're like DNA, they replicate throughout your company, they can kill your culture, can make it. So be very careful who you hire. Uh, get to a business that has great margins. You love your family, but sometimes you don't like them. You like your uh, people that you work with, your employees, but sometimes you love them. So you wanna have uh, enough margins so you can take care of them and, and uh, provide growth and salary and perks and all these different things. And then cap table wise, you know, don't, don't get 50% of your business up right away. A lot of people say, you know, we should do 50-50. I think if it's your idea, you'd be very careful with equity and, and, and the cap table. Um, as an athlete, um, you know, you've played sports for such a long time. My, my question is, what lessons have you learned during your time playing basketball, not including teamwork, uh, that have contributed to your um, success with you know your interpersonal relationships? I mean, it's a good question. <clears throat> there, there's so so many different things you learn from playing sports and being on a team. You learn how to work together. You learn how to do hard things. Um, you learn that nothing's more important than your wife and kids. Um, but probably the main thing I've learned from playing sports is. Uh, is uh, self-discipline, the, the ability to do really hard things, to wake up in the morning, to do things you don't want to do. Uh, it, it's, it, you become, you actually build up a resiliency to stress, a resiliency to anxiety. You know, when I run out in the tunnel BYU and I got 23,000 fans screaming, you know, and then sometimes they say they hate you or they like you. You, you, you tend to, the first year is really painful and really bad, but then you tend up, uh, you build up a resiliency to it. And you can do harder things every year, it gets easier. Travis, I read that you received Russian citizenship from Vladimir Putin, and I thought that was pretty cool. Maybe you could talk about that a little bit. And also curious if since that time you've ever been able to ride around the Russian countryside horseback without a shirt on. <laughs> yeah, I'll take the first part of the question first. Uh, um, yeah, played basketball in Russia for five years. My coach was David Blatt, coached the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, somewhere throughout the process, they said, we'd like to give you Russian citizenship. Um, in, in Europe, you can only have uh, two Americans per team. But in Russia, you have to have two Russians on the court at all times. And so it's quite the advantage. And so the ability to have that. And I was only the second American ever to, to get Russian uh, passport. And so... I think I think doing good. We had you know the foundation going, and we were helping people in orphanages. Along with, uh, I was playing pretty good basketball. Enabled us to to get that honor. It was an honor. I didn't have to give up my American citizenship. It was just one of the things they wanted to show. Uh, uh, probably uh, some gratitude to, towards my family and I, and and we're very thankful. On the on the other side, um, I, I don't think they do it very often. I mean, the picture is hilarious. Uh, uh, Vladimir Putin on a bear uh, uh, shirt off. I, I would love to. But no, I, I, I haven't yet. No. So I'm just curious. Do you have a favorite professional basketball team or athlete? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I like any team that plays the game the right way. I think there's a there's a right way to play and there's a wrong way to play. Um, so San Antonio Spurs, Golden State Warriors, probably my two favorite teams. And uh, I I like a lot of players. Michael Jordan was phenomenal. Um, but I like all the guys I played with. Luis Scola, Jose Calderon. Uh, Jason Terry, some of these guys are just phenomenal. They're, they're the nicest humans in the world, but so competitive and so tough and, and so fun to play on a team with. So Travis, you mentioned that you feel like we are a lot more capable than we recognize. Um, how have you, what have you learned about goal setting uh, as a person and for your own businesses? Uh, such a great question. <clears throat> I think it's probably one of the most important things you can learn. Uh, is, is structure, and, and it's different for everyone, personal structure, but in businesses, it's important to have the same vision, the same clear expectations, and that everyone's kind of rowing the boat towards the same destination. But in your personal life, um, I, I think one of the main things that happens here on Earth is we just get distracted. Uh, we, we start with our goals, and we just get distracted by life in general, and so it's nice to have someone to be accountable to 
and it, I break my goals down into quarters. I do personal, spiritual, physical, and then I do skills. And so I, I think it's uh, probably the most important thing you can do. You can find a mentor and advisor that could help you break down your goals uh, specifically. But and then, and then I don't do self-defeating, like it's all or nothing. I have to do 100% of these goals. I usually say, say I got to do 60 or 70%. And if I do that, then that means I'm better than I was last quarter and, I'll, and, I, and I'm progressing. Yeah, so Travis, uh, as I learned more about your time in the NBA, I understand in your rookie season, you had a stress fracture and it caused you to miss around 40 games or so. Uh, with that type of setback, uh, has that kind of helped you provide more perspective on handling those types of situations in life, whether it was in your, the remaining of your basketball career or into your business career now? Yeah, I mean, that, that was a hard time in my life. It was anytime you're injured and you have to sit out, it's, it's brutal on an athlete, especially just your mind, not, let alone your body. Uh, just your mindset is such a powerful part of your life in, in, in sports and in business. But you're always gonna have setbacks, you're gonna have failures, you're gonna have unexpected things that happen. And so I think generally the same way you're successful in life is, is you build a plan, you build the steps to get there. Hopefully you ask some mentors, some advisors to help you with that. And then you rapidly persist in implementing your plan. Um, and, and then the uncomfortable part is when your plan doesn't go like you wanted it to and you get a stress fracture, you get injury or, or your you know, boss hires someone that that, that you, you didn't like or whatever it happens, uh, you just, you adjust, you rapidly persist some more and eventually you be become successful. So don't let those things get down, to get you down. And, and the stress fracture got me down for a little while, but a lot of people helped me through it and having a plan helped me through it too. Travis, I want to thank you for coming and being on our, our web series. Tons of great advice I think can apply again to people's personal lives, business lives. I think we all can take something from that. You're thank nice. You. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.